I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our SQL Express playlist, and we're going to take a look at how to do a full backup and restore of our database. Now, as many of you know, backups are a mainstay of doing database applications out in the real world, and to have really good backups is super important. And full backup is a great way to do it on SQL Express, and it gives you a nice way to do a restore as well, and we'll explore both of those today. Let's get to it. Looking for more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, backups. This is super critical and if you've been working on applications for any length of time, you know you need to do these. This is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. We're going to go back and look at an SQL Express installation that I did in a previous video. Make sure to check that out if you have not seen that one. You can choose to do SQL Server authentication with username or password, or you can use the admin that installed it. In this case, I'm going to use that admin account to uh, get in my Windows account. And you can see I have these sort of you know test databases and ideas and that toe operations one we've been using in another playlist. And uh, if I open this test database here, you can see there's some employee data that we also used in a previous SQL Express video, uh, which I will post here. And uh, you can see there's some, you know, a table with some test stuff. There's an employee table. And what we want to do is uh, today we're going we're gonna to back up this database and then we're going to restore it. Uh, and well, we're going to drop it and then we're going to restore it. So we're going to like completely delete it as if we had a catastrophe and then we're going to restore it from our backup. And we're going to use all command line today. You can see uh, I created a new query there. You can click the new query on the toolbar uh, to get a, a worksheet here. And uh, we're going to go ahead. Now you can choose from that top left uh, drop down. You can go to the master. Um, we're just going to use master here. So uh, you're going to learn uh, in this series, um, I'm going to do most of the operations through command line or through queries um, since these are the easiest ways to automate these things. Uh, if you learn to use only the, uh, the, the GUI that is provided, uh, then you obviously can't automate that quite as nicely as if you are able to use scripting. And so we're going to use master, we're going to hit that go, uh, and that's going to uh, process that and then we're going to use the backup database command. Now we're going to say backup database, database name, and uh, use to disk because most of us are small application developers. We're, we're going to be doing this and we can back up to our disk and so we're going to put in that disk name and, uh, and that's going to give us uh, an ability to do that. Now uh, we're going to use that directory test backup there and I'm going to give our backup name test underscore bu dot dat back and from there you can click the execute button in the toolbar or you can click F5 or hit F5 on your keyboard and it will give you the uh, response here you can see uh, it says process you know, 424 pages blah 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 uh, we know that it ran we can check our directory and we can see that our file is in there that is our backup file for our database and so uh, that is a successful run of our backup and the very nice thing about using this style of backup is that you can run it while users are in the in the database uh, you can you know do those kinds of things you don't have to wait until everybody's out um, you can schedule it with a Windows scheduler, um, you know, to run at night. Now we do not have the SQL Server agent because we're using SQL Express, uh, but that is something that we can look at. So, all right, so let's go ahead and drop that database. So I'm, I use the drop command there, and uh, what I'm going to do is go into our tree on the left here, and you can see the database looks like it's still there until you right click on databases and go refresh and then you'll see that it has been indeed dropped and so we no longer have a database there on our SQL Express server and uh, that is exactly what we want to see there 
and uh, we can go ahead and pull up our directory here. We can see that we have our um, backup here. So that has all of our data in it. And uh, we're going to use that full backup uh, to do a restore now. And so we can do kind of a similar thing if we want. Let's use this query sheet here. We've already got our master uh, go statement in there. I usually put those up there just in case I happen to navigate to another database or I start my my script when I'm looking at a different database and I forget and then I end up running it inside of some other database and so I always put my master uh, command at the top there use master go. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to do a restore and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to restore file list only uh, from disk and we're going to put in our string, uh, which is, uh, you know, our, our path to our test backup, um, you know, backup file that we just created. And so we can execute that and that's going to give us some information that we can use uh, because sometimes we, m we might not know what the logical name or the, or the, uh, other information happens to be and so we can use that information in our actual backup uh, command and so that's really helpful because we might want to move some files to different directories and things like that and so if we want some flexibility in doing this we can certainly uh, do that and so uh, we'll do a restore database test database now that's where you can also change your database name if you want to so you could call it you know uh, test database 47 or whatever you know uh, from disk equals and then we're going to paste in that string again and note that I put the n in front of our string there and that specifies that it is a unicode uh, text that's going in or an nvarchar instead of a varchar and so that might make a difference with your database okay so the next things we're going to do is we're going to use with and we're going to move our files and so Moving files is something that, as a database developer, you're going to have to do all the time. You know, servers change, environments change, and you, you end up having to move databases all over the place. And this is a nice, easy way to do it. We'll do uh, with move, and we're going to move test database uh, to our, we'll put it in our backup uh, folder here. Uh, test database, uh, te or test backup, and then uh, test database dot MDF, that's our, our data file, and, uh, and then we'll move our log file uh, to the same place. And so you can move them to different places. This is a nice opportunity for you guys. Some people like to put the logs on one you know, disk system and the data files on a different, data, on a different uh, disk system. And uh, that can be very, very handy and also can be great for management depending on what kind of environment that you have. Okay, so this is our entire statement here. We'll put a go at the end of it, just like we did with the other ones. We're going to restore database, test database from disk, and we're going to you know, grab that backup file with moving of our data file to... Uh, the you know the new location and also the log file uh, to the new location and you can see there is our log file as specified when we used file list only up above there and so this is a nice uh, one one to use and so we can hit go and you can see that it actually <laughs> because the file is so small the database is really tiny uh, it it executed almost instantaneously and now what we can do is we can go and do our refresh just like we did before when we dropped that database and bingo there we go we've got our test database in there that is exactly what we want to see we can right click and you know get the top thousand records from different tables if we want even though there's only two records in there um, and that's really great um, nice way of doing it uh, we are also going to be taking a look at detaching and attaching a database, which is a different method. It's not the same as a backup, but we'll be checking that out. Check out the links in the description. Uh, but there, there are our data files. We've got our a log file and our data file. So if I hover over this one, it says this is our primary data file. 
And if I hover over this one, it says that's our transaction log file. And there is our backup that we used uh, in order to restore our database. And of course, one thing to be aware of is that if you've back, backed up and restored, you may need to reattach your users. You might have some orphan users there, depending on the version of SQL Server that you have. Um, so, you know, if you created Jay Smith as a login, you'll have to drop him and recreate him as a user in, in the database because it has been restored. And that is kind of what we want to see there. And as I mentioned, you may need to put an N in front of your strings depending on the database that you have. Um, in my case, it did not matter. Um, I could use N or not use it, but you may need to use an N in front of your strings. And uh, as I mentioned uh, just now, we also have the option uh, to do a detach database and an attach database. That's where we can actually just detach the files without doing a backup and take them somewhere else and then attach them to another server. And so check the links for the video on that one. Next, what can we do? But we can go and test our database to make sure that we can still access it in the way that we used it before. And so in this case, I'm going to use an access database. Lots of us are doing access front ends with SQL Express backends. We created this one in a previous episode. Make sure to check that out and uh, we're connecting to the same database. I'm gonna use the uh, SA login here for this test server, and uh, that would get me into all of the tables if I had like 10 tables. I would have one login, and you can see there is the data that we have in our ODBC connection from our access database, and here are the same records in SQL Express. And that is how you can do a backup and restore in SQL Express. Want some extra protection for your remote desktop? Make sure to check out my RDP cloaker. The link is in the description.